Okay, guys, we are now live for another Wednesday night conversations with Cougars. I want to thank everybody for the later start. And gosh, I'm so pleased to have Johnny Falk as my guest tonight. How are you doing tonight, bud? I'm doing all right. I'm glad to be on with you tonight. <clears throat> I'm so pleased to have you on. I've, I've been wanting to meet you and catch up with you for quite a while. And I'm, I'm glad you've got some time tonight for us. For you guys who didn't get a chance to watch uh, Johnny, gosh, he had so many nicknames back in the day. The Hitman and Bookie, I think, were two of the main nicknames. Any other nicknames that you uh, <laughs> that you went by that you can share? No, that was pretty much it. Um, they called me Falk by my last name or Fizzle or something like that, but that was pretty much it. What they also called him was a man who never came off the field. If you guys ever saw Johnny play at Northview and even before that or when he was at Troy, he was a kick returner. He was a quarterback. He was a running back. He was a wide receiver. He was a, what did I leave out, cornerback. Just about every position. I don't know, did you run water in and out? Were you calling the game? Were you up in the box calling the game on the radio? Did you do any of those things as well, John? <laughs> <laughs> but before we get back into those good old days, tell folks what you're up to now, because I know you're over in Georgia and you're an educator, you're a coach and so much more. So you catch folks up with you now. Yeah, I'm just um, coaching middle school football, um, just enjoying um, Georgia, just enjoying my family, my boys. They're, they're getting into sports and they're playing and, they're working out now a little bit on their own and, you know, just doing a lot of different things and, you know, just enjoying life right now. And you're coaching and teaching in the middle school level? Middle school, yes, sir. Teaching marketing. Go ahead. Got a marketing education class that I teach. <clears throat> Good deal. Good deal. Now, how old are your sons? Uh, my sons are nine and five. Oh, they're, I bet they are wide open, aren't they? Wide open. They're, they're getting up there. They're, they able to do a lot of things on their own. They're out the door. They want me out the door 24-7. We're catching the ball. We're, we're doing a whole lot of things, man. Love it, love it, love it. Now, uh, do you recognize in them a little bit of you, or did any of the older family members tell you, ooh, that's you at a young age on your, talking about your sons? Yeah, they, they, they do. And um, I recognized him when he, when he first, my oldest son, when he first started playing flag football. Mm -hmm. He, um, you know, the first time he got the ball in his hands, that's when I kind of really knew that he had some of me in him. You know, exactly. not trying to brag, but when he, when he grabbed the ball, he knew exactly what to do with it. And it just kind of, it kind of caught me off guard because I didn't know it. That, that was my first time seeing him, you know, catch a football and react and do you know, the things that you're supposed to do on a football field. So it, it kind of caught me by surprise. And I, you know, I just, it just really just surprised me, really. <laughs> oh, look at that smile on your face. That's so awesome. That's a proud dad right there. Now, now you are also, you're coaching. What sports are you coaching? I'm just coaching football. Mm -hmm. Just and football. Are you helping out? Are you a head coach, assistant coach? What are you doing? Defensive coordinator. Defense coordinator, without and offense. You know, in middle school setting, you, you're going to pretty much do whatever it is, you know, wide receiver, quarterback, whatever that is, they, they need help with. So we're pretty much going to do it all. Well, I know that in Georgia, they take their high school, the middle school football as serious as we do in Alabama. So I bet you're playing in some, against some good competition. Oh, oh, yeah. A lot of great competition, uh, a lot of high profile athletes here. I'm talking about, I've never seen a whole bunch of big guys in my life, you know, high school wise, you know, until I, until I kind of got up here, they got some big linemen up here. I don't, I don't know what they're eating up here, but they got several big linemen. I've been in some facilities you know, with some guys I know, man, they got it's some huge linemen. Awesome. Awesome. Well, speaking of awesome, Johnny, we got a whole bunch of folks that are already in here and sharing some love for you tonight. We've got Shane Cobb. We got John McGlone. We got Matt Rucker. We got Jason Mullins and Anthony Spann have all rolled in and said to tell you hello. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Tell them I said thank you. Hopefully they, they're watching. Oh, I just want to thank them for showing me and showing me some love. Well, from back in the day, guys, Johnny played for Coach Emery Latta in the late 90s. And yeah. for those of us that were well before Johnny or, or much younger than Johnny didn't get to see him play, I've seen some video and this man was awesome. He never, like I said earlier, never came off the field. So what was it 
what was your favorite part about being a football player, about being a Northview Cougar? Let's just start in the, there. What, give me some good memories. I, mean, I, I just love Northview, man. I, I, my brother went to Northview. My, my cousin went to Northview. That's where I kind of started with football. My cousin, I don't know if I was in elementary, uh, elementary school or early middle school, he took me up to one of his workouts at Northview. And, you know, they had the same equipment, you know, pull down, I'm sitting on the pull down and, you know, just doing the pull down, just, you know, just a little kid just in there, just watching them work out. And that's where it kind of all started right there. Who are your cousins? Who, who is this? His name is Darius Falk. Darius. And uh, was that your cousin or your brother? My cousin. And you said you had a brother that also played or went to he, he went to North. He didn't finish at Northview. He ended up finishing here in Georgia, but he did. He was an... Um, two-star athlete or, you know, two-sport athlete, played football, basketball, actually a three, played a little baseball too, so. Very good, very good. Well, John, we've got some more folks. Kalima Thompson, Shirley C. says to tell you hello. Uh, tell Kalima I said hello too as well. <laughs> Matt Rugger says, what's up, coach? He enjoyed being the athletic <laughs> trainer alongside you at Northview. Um, Oh, we've also got Reva Skirtman and Steve Stutz have now joined in. I'm telling you, you got a lot of folks coming on tonight to say hello to Johnny Falk. Now, Johnny, where did you go to elementary school and middle school? Elementary school, I went to um, Gerard. Actually, mm -hmm. I was um, in Coach Griffin's wife class. Mm -hmm. She was my teacher. Um, then what I went to, I went to, um, is it um, Grandview? Mm -hmm. Then I came back to Gerard for middle school. One year, middle school, I went to Texas, stayed with my aunt, um, play. That's, well, actually, I started sixth grade football at um, Wire when I was Doug, too. That's why I started Doug, too. And then middle school at Carver, that's when they put, was it, that's when they put um, at, um, gray and blue, and was it gray and red at Carver. Right, right. It was only. I suspect that Coach Griffin's wife may have shared a little with Coach Griffin about a young Johnny Falk and to keep an eye out for him when he was coming up through. Did you know at that time, did you have any idea the connection? Did you know that her husband was coaching out at Northview or you were just too young? Yeah, I was too young. I was just in the um, second grade when, right. I had, when I was in there with Miss Griffin. Mm -hmm. Second grade. So I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know she was just my teacher. You know, I didn't know it until I got to high school. And did you, other than football, did you play other sports as a kid growing up? Yes, I played basketball, football, ran a little track, pretty much, you know, those three sports. You know, much like our childhoods, I was so glad to hear what you said about your sons, about just wanting to be outside all the time playing ball. You know, that was certainly my childhood, and it was probably your childhood as well. Yeah. It's it's too easy to, to say that most kids these days want to sit on the couch and play games or on their phone. But did you play the sport, what I call the sport of what's happening now? Meaning if it was track season, you ran track. If it was basketball season, you played basketball. Was that the way your, your school year went? That, that's exactly how it went. Went from football to basketball with Coach Griffin and Coach Fleming, then went to track with Coach Carroll. And I suspect you may have had maybe one or two days at best in between seasons, or did you just go from one to the next? One, one to the next. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> Which now, as a, as a youngster, middle school, your first couple of years in high school, did you have a favorite sport? Did you know that eventually football would be your post high school career? Or that wasn't really... Um, I guess describe for me what you're thinking back then. Yeah, I, I knew all along it was football because when I was in the neighborhood, that's all we played. You know, I used to line up with the big guys. I think it was Dorsey and his brothers. He, Dorsey had like two or three brothers. And when we lived at a neighborhood, we had a big field and all of us would just throw the ball up and we would catch it and we would just run as fast as we could because we played with a lot of big guys. You know, you know, uh, Commissioner Dorsey, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Which, in which neighborhood? Where was this big field? We stayed off of um, Denton Road and Rolling Hills. Mm -hmm. There was a couple big fields there. So we, we had our choice. <laughs> and how many athletes were living in your neighborhood that eventually went either to Northview or, or played at Dothan? Uh, it was quite, quite a few. I was going to say, I bet you could have probably fielded a whole football team 
out of the neighborhood alone. Yes, sir. We could have. I mean, like I said, it was a lot of us out there. We were just running around and just having a good time. It was hot, sweaty. You know, we just did what we had to do. That's all we had. You know, I didn't have a whole lot of video games. All I had was to do is just go out the door. Now, in, in my neighborhood, when mom went outside and wanted all the boys home, she rang a bell. We could hear it in the neighborhood. Was there something like that in your neighborhood or was it the street light coming on or what? What? How did you know it was time to come home? Street lights. Those street <laughs> lights, when they came, I had, had to be at the house. My mom, she wouldn't let me stay out too late. Those street lights came on. It was, it was time to go. Hey, mama, mama may not have always been right in your mind, but she was always mama. We were going to listen to her. That's all. Awesome. You know, now that I think about it, she was right. Mm -hmm. For me to get my butt home, you know. Yeah, home. Some of those, I bet you some of those lessons right now you're instilling on those boys, aren't you? Yes. She, my mom, she taught me a lot of lessons. She was one of my biggest, you know, influencers and inspirations, my mom. Well, let's, let's talk about inspirations. Let's talk about influencers and mentors. When you were a kid in, in middle school, when you came back to, to Dothan, and as you were about to, to head into high school, did you have older uh, students or athletes, teachers, neighbors who you really looked up to that, that really made an impression on you? Um, just, I mean, just the coaches that were around me, you know, that I had in middle school and, you know, the coaches that I saw around me, like Coach Fleming, I always saw him. You know, he, you know, he always would talk to me. Um, the other coach, Fleming, his uncle, he would always come to our Cedar League games and I would see him and talk to him. So, you know, and then my brothers and all my, all my family were all inspirations and inspired me to do, you know, bigger and better things, you know, going into to high school, middle school and high school. They always they all inspired me. And did you have any athletes maybe at Northview or Dothan who were a few years older that maybe you saw him play on a Friday night, or maybe you saw him play at the rec center that you're just, man, I'd like to, to copy his game. Or I wish I could be as, as good as him. Who were some of those athletes, if, if anyone? I probably had to go with, I remember my ninth grade year, the Dalton High versus um, Northview game, seeing Gabe Gross throw that touchdown pass to Tars. Mm -hmm. Man, that was a sight to see right there. And then, you know, that same game you had, um, Cornelius Bennett chased the running back down and, and stripped the ball out. I mean, man, those are some of the, and then I think it was Wayne White. I think he played defensive back. Um, I forgot the other guy, but it was, I mean, it was several players, you know, that, that motivated me and that inspired me to, you know, want to get out there on that field. Um, my cousin Solomon, like I said, Commissioner Dorsey, um, a lot of guys. And were you on the sidelines or were you in the stands for that game? I was actually on, um, in the stands. <clears throat> I, didn't, I didn't know, and I'm getting ready to get into your ninth grade year, but I didn't know if the coaches, I know Coach Latta was the head coach, and I know that Coach Flem was your, your ninth grade coach, but I didn't know if you got any, any taste being up with the varsity and JV during your ninth grade year. No, I think we, um, they let us come up um, toward the end of the, the season, but I don't think, I don't think we dressed out of anything like that. I think, or they even, they talked about bringing us up, but uh, we didn't dress out of anything like that though. Now, was it, was it ever a doubt that you'd be coming to Northview or was there a concern or thoughts that you might be going to Dothan High? No, no, I always, I always been a Cougar. Mm -hmm. My family grew up a Cougar. I was going to be a Cougar and I was thinking, you know, my son was going to be a Cougar, but we end up, you know, making a change and, um, you know, moving to Georgia and, you know, so that, you know, which that wouldn't have happened anyway, because, you know, with, with the school and all the changes, you know, going on. So now I was always a cougar. You know, my, like I said, my cousin brought me up when I was, you know, what, mid, ele, late elementary, early middle school. And you know, I was working out, seeing them work out. So. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Johnny, let's talk about that transition from middle school to high school. Northview, you've been there, of course, you had seen it as a maybe a middle schooler time to time, but it's, it's a big, huge campus. It's almost like a junior college. It's it, just compared to the other high schools, the footprints of the other high schools in town, Northview is tremendously larger. So it can be an imposing uh, place to first starting at school, coupled with uh, already starting fall uh, camp as a ninth grader. How long did it take you to get comfortable with 
the fact that you are now at Northview, you were a ninth grade student as well as an athlete. Was it an easy transition or is it like most of us, it took a while to kind of find our, our, our footing and, and our belonging, so to speak? It, it took a little bit. I had a little family there, you know, and some friends from, from middle school that we all, you know, all came with us that, that ninth grade year. And, you know, just walking in those halls and seeing all those, everybody in the quad right there in the middle, you know, you got the little benches right there, everybody sit on and, you know, you got a thousand, you know, students coming out at one time. So, I mean, it actually, you know, it took a little while. And then, you know, after, you know, once you got into the football season, you kind of met some more friends and, you know, got a little bit more comfortable. So, I mean, it, it, it took a little while and good thing about it, you know, we had, like I said, we had friends and I had a little family there that, you know, I could lean on a little bit. Well, I was gonna say that always helps if you know folks either in your grade, like some of the kids coming over from Gerard or, or the fact that you maybe have a cousin or older brother at the school already, that would help. But let's, let's put aside for just a minute or so uh, sports and pep rallies, locker room, gymnasiums, all of that. What was it about being a student at Northview that you found to be such a, a neat experience? And it doesn't matter what grade, Maybe a teacher made an impression on you. Maybe there's a particular class. Maybe you love those pizzas and lemonades at lunch. I don't know. <laughs> Tell me, share with us a little I, bit I, of- I definitely love the pizzas and, and the pink lemonade we used to get. Those square pieces, man, they were good. Those peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, uh, that soup that we had, all of it was good. Now, does your school now serve those same pizzas which have been being served for the last 50 years? Now they, their pizza actually looked kind of like Domino's a little bit, or you know, they're more triangle. Wow. <laughs> they, they don't really have the score. They, they're kind of they're a little bit advanced. Mm -hmm. That's so great. Well, what teachers or what classes made an impression on you? Did you have any favorite teachers? <clears throat> um, like I said, a lot of teachers. Um, it's just Coach Fleming, Coach Griffin, Miss Snell. She was my um typing teacher, uh, Miss Solomon, she was my English teacher. Um, you know, pretty much all, all my teachers, you know, taught me a lesson or, or taught me something one way or another, whether it was good I, or bad. I, I think Dr. Smith was gone well before you got there, but, and I don't know if you knew of Dr. Smith, but he used to end the pep rallies with a famous poem and he'd jump up and click his heels and, and get everybody just all, all jazzed up and fired up for the game. At those pep rallies as a ninth grader, did you sit up in the stands with the other ninth graders or did they let the ninth grade team sit on the floor or wherever the football team was for those? No, we, we actually sat in the stands. I, I think we either sat with our class or either sat with ninth grade football. I, I don't think we, like they, they do it now, they kind of let everybody come together. We didn't do it like that back, you know, back then. So well, those pep rallies were, were so much fun, so yeah. loud and so much. Loud and man, just when you hear that band, man, it just gets you adrenaline. It still gets my adrenaline. Anytime I hear a band and I'm in a, a gym, it, my adrenaline goes. It probably takes you right back to that Cougar gym, too. Right, right back to it. And I'm telling you, anytime I hear a band, like, you know, we having little pep rallies with the high school or with the middle school, and they that band comes out, especially if they play one of those songs um, mm -hmm. that Northview, you know, the Cougars used to play. Sure. Yeah, really sure. excited. Oh, Johnny, we got a bunch more folks that have rolled in. We got Douglas, DC Clark, Kevin Jackson, Cliff Mendham, Chris Smith, and Chris says the Whirly Bird. <laughs> Are you talking about that play that Coach Lotta put in for us? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get to that in just a minute. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> bringing that up. Let's go to ninth grade football. Who was your coach in ninth grade? Ninth grade was Coach Fleming and Coach Bruner. And what positions did they have you uh, play? I think I was actually, I played a little running back, and I think uh, Coach Bruner might have had me at some linebacker, linebacker and safety. And what was your size? How big were you at the time? I, was, I wasn't that big. I, I never was big, you know, varsity. I, I might have been, I think varsity, I maybe finished at 145, 150, so I couldn't have been mm -hmm. much, much bigger than I was, maybe 135, 140. Well, did it take you, you know, in ninth grade, you have kids from all over the city really coming together from different places and maybe some kids who've transferred in from out of city. But at that time, um, 
the, the size of the teams for ninth grade have ranged. You know, back in my day, I'm a good, uh, almost 15 years older than you, Johnny. We had almost 70 guys come out my ninth grade year. Now we only had about 16 who stayed the whole way through. That, you know, that's normal, that's what happens. How big was y'all's team? Do you remember, did you have a, a decent sized team? I mean, were, were a lot of guys playing both ways or did you have enough where everybody could, could focus on one position? I mean, we had a lot of guys that played both ways, but we did have quite a few. I think we had about 25 or 30 because when we went, you know, scrimmage or anything like that, we had enough guys for both sides of the football. Well, that's good. That's good. Now, what, what, when, I guess, I don't know if this is a fair question. I know you've always been a confident athlete. There's no doubt about that. But it still takes some accomplishment when you get to the next level. When you're, when, you're, when you're in a new situation, a new school, new team, new grade, there still comes a time or two where you have to prove yourself, not to just the coaches and other players, but to yourself as an athlete. And it gives you that inner confidence that says, I, I can, not only can I succeed at this level, but I know I'm gonna dominate. Did you have such a moment in ninth grade or did it evolve once you got onto the 10th, 11th, 12th grades? I think, Maybe after I caught my first touchdown in the 10th grade and started playing a little bit more, I started gaining a little bit more confidence. But I mean, I was always a guy who would just, just sit back and listen because I wanted to know what to do when I got in there. Sure. So I would just, you know, kind of listen or ask questions. I was an ask question guy. I was going to ask you questions, you know, so I know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I think it happened my 10th grade year. Um, I think it was the U Fall game. I actually remember I caught my fir first touchdown pass at U Fall game as a 10th grader. Take, take us to there. Do you remember the play or the situation? Who threw it? Any of that stuff? I, I do remember who threw it. It was Brandon Brown. You know, Brandon Brown, he threw my first touchdown pass. I think it might have been a go right up, uh, right up the seam mm -hmm. against Ufaula. Oh, very good. Was that at home or was that up in Ufaula? It was at home, actually. It was at home, yes. <laughs> now, that, that's, what, that's where I want to go. But, but I got to tell you, we got Will Garner says you're the GOAT. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you, Will. We got Brett Heisler, Justin Andrews, Easy E, Eric Easley. Easy. And John McGlone says you were natural at DB. We're going to get to that in just a second. Yeah. I want to talk about Friday nights at Rip Hughes. Did you have a routine? Some athletes, you know, are superstitious. Got to put on this sock first. Got to put on the sweat certain way. Some don't care about any of that stuff. Some guys throw up before every game. Other guys can't stop talking before every game. Did you have music? What was your routine? Let's say a Friday afternoon, you're at the pep rally, everything's over. You're back at the school changing or getting ready to get on the bus. Take us through a little bit of that for you. <clears throat> well, once I got on the bus, it, it was it was time to lock in. It wasn't, I didn't have any headphones, anything like that. I, you know, we kind of sat in the back as an older guy, we sat in the back and um, just kind of got locked in and, you know, on the way over that hill, once you, once you smell that bread, it's time to go. Once you know, you that is, bread, it's time to go. <laughs> that is so right, Johnny, that only folks who played or went to games at Rip Hughes, I can't tell you, my, my parents, lots of people used to send the kids over to the bread place at halftime and go back <laughs> with loaves of bread and <laughs> you could smell it for forever. But you're so right about that. That's awesome. So, you know, once I got there, you know, I was I was a quiet guy. Kind of sat, you know, to the side. Coach Bruno would, you know, wrap my cleats up. That's the only time I really got my uh, my cleats wrapped. It's when he would own one that would wrap my cleats. Would sit down and you know, side of the fence, you wrap my cleats, and then I would kind of go sit down because I wanted to try to think, visualize what I was going to do. You know, whether I was going to catch an interception, how I was going to run the touchdown, or make a tackle. I was a visual guy, you know, even though everything didn't happen the way I wanted to go, and I was still would try to visual, you know, what I wanted to do. Well, that's, and that was your routine. You, you got wrapped by Coach Bruner. You were in your thought process. Like I said, some guys, you know, they just want to talk because I got that nervous energy. Yeah. Guys are to themselves and don't want to uh, really be, be bothered. Now, right before game time, right before the, the final uh, meet up in the locker room with the coaches and, and last game, I mean, last minute preparation. When you're in that home uh, clubhouse or locker room under the stadium, 
Could you hear the students or the fans or the band above you? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, back then, you know, we had a great crowd back then. You know, band was maybe, what, 200, stu uh, 200 um, students, 300, 250, 300. And, man, they were loud, you know, especially, you know, coming out the beginning of the game and, you know, basically, you know, we're just excited and ready. You know, they had us pumped up, playing that fight song when we come out. So, I mean, it was, it was sweet. And I, I had a similar experience when we would be in that locker room and my coach was Harry Wayne Parrish, you know, the first coach Parrish. Yeah. And the coaches would be doing there with the groups and then coach Parrish would pull us together with his last comments. But while it was kind of quiet in the locker room before coach spoke, you could feel the energy above you. You could feel the students just stomping on the, the bleachers. You could hear the band start to do its thing. And the crowds, you're right, the crowds were real big back in the day. Now, take us out of the clubhouse. Were you one of the first guys out or were you one of the last guys out? I was kind of in the, in the middle toward the last. I wasn't the last guy out, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I was kind of toward the back of that pack. And what was it like for you huddled up in the end zone? I, I don't know how y'all did it, but before you ran through the big sign from the cheerleaders, you come in, the band is playing and coming to the, the sidelines. What was that like for you? I mean, it was it was surreal. Just just getting up, being able to line up out there and, you know, see everything, get ready to happen, see the fans in there, the band. You know, I know sometimes we, we were actually, Coach Lada would have us, I think, walk to the 50-yard line and let them play, and then I think we would run back and then get ready to run out the uh, out the shoot. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was just exciting, man. Just your adrenaline, you know, your heart beating. You're ready to go. You're ready to get that first hit, so you can calm down and and, and you know and relax and get focused and be ready to you know lock in and and play as hard as you could. Now you played so many positions, particularly your last couple of years at at Northview. From a week by week, how was it determined where you'd line up each each game? <laughs> how did you and Coach Latta? What did you? How'd y'all figure that out? Um, whatever you said, you know, we had to do, and what was best for the team, mm -hmm. you know, that's what we had to do. You know, well, I mean, in practices each week, were you working mainly on the the defensive side, or the where were you during the practice weeks? Well, you, you, you know the head coach, they got first choice, so we're going to go wherever, you know, Coach Ladder was an offensive guy, so, you know, I was going to be that at a um, quarterback or either running back, you know, so when, wherever they had me at, so I, wherever he told me to go, you know, I was there. Wanted me to play quarterback, you know, I was there. Running back, I was going to be there. Well, well playing, playing quarterback and playing defensive back at different times, I guess having knowledge of the way both positions worked on the high school level, did that give you any advantage when you're playing quarterback quarterback with the ball, thinking, well, if I got to make this pass, I think I know how this DB is going to play it because I know how I'd play it. Or did you allow that thought process to come into your mind when you're dropping back to pass or, or, or flip it when you're playing cornerback I know where he's about to throw this ball. Did you did you allow your thought thought process to get into that? Well, I, I mean, I thought about it a little bit, but you know, in our offense, we didn't throw a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So you know, now when we threw it, it was either going to be a score, or you know, I was going to take off and run it. But you know, like I said, um, we threw the ball maybe what, maybe five times a game. We was a heavy running team. Um, and, you know, as long as I knew the quarterback position, I was able to drop off and play running back because, you know, I knew the quarterback position and the holes. I mean, it was very simple. Coach Lottie made it very simple for us. So we didn't have to just, all we had to do was just play. We didn't have, it wasn't a whole lot of thinking. All we had to do is snap the ball, toss it, throw it, play football. Well, I was going to say, Johnny, you're one of those back in the day, one of those gifted, those rare gifted athletes that you just worked on instinct. Thank you, you just you just figured it out, you know. The the rest of us had to, <laughs> had to really work at our our craft at our positions and hope that we could reach to your levels. And we're going to get to those that jersey over your shoulder in just a few minutes. 
But before we get to the Troy time period, Austin Emfinger has some really nice things to say to you, including calling you a hero of his and a truly great friend to him today. That's very kind of you, Austin. And uh, yeah, Austin, I say thank you. Absolutely. And Keith Price, one of my teammates over in Mobile, has joined us. So good to see you, Keith. So thank you. I'm talking, of course, with Johnny Falk, and we're in the late 90s playing for Coach Emery Latta and Coach Fleming on the court. Let's switch over to basketball for just a minute. You can't hit anybody when you're on the basketball court. No, you can't hit anybody. You got the ball in your hand. So take us through that mentality of a football player now playing basketball, where you now, much like when you were a quarterback, you got to create when you got the ball in your hand. How was that playing for Coach Flem? Yeah, well, it first started off with Coach Griffin. <clears throat> and like, I was mainly just a defensive guy. I wasn't as, you know, as talented as I was as a football player. I was more of a defensive guy. The only way I would, you know, score points is if I get stiff. I strip the ball from the guy, get a steal, and go lay it up. So, I mean, you know, that was my mentality. You know, they had a fast guard. They needed me to guard. You know, they would put me on that guy or, you know, one of the best athletes they had on the team. And, you know, I just played it like, you know, football. If I was on defense, that's, you know, that's the way I played it. I, I bought, brought the ball up down the court, you know, passed it to my guys. It wasn't a shooter, you know. I'm not going to say I was. <laughs> you know? So, I got the ball to them, got it out of my hands. They did what they did with. I got back on defense. I just did my job. I knew my job as a, you know, basketball player was to play defense, steal the ball, you know, press, or whatever it is they needed me to do. Very good. Now, when basketball, yeah. season, when basketball season ended, did you then go into track season? Did you, did you participate in spring training football? What were you doing those last couple of months of the spring semester each year? I don't know. Let's see, did we have spring football right out there? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think track ran into football like it like it does now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think we were able to finish track and then go to football. Did you play any baseball uh, when you were at Northview or was that a sport just when you were younger? Um, no baseball. I, I did go out my senior year. I, I did go out and, um, you know, work out with them at the beginning. But, you know, I think it was kind of too late. With baseball, but I did play in middle school. I did play a little rec baseball. Well, by your senior year, that February, I assume you signed in February with Troy. You were a signed, sealed, and delivered. It was time to, to head up the road to Troy to play with Coach Blakeney. Yes, sir, it was. Well, let's talk about the recruiting process. Your senior year, you had a lot of publicity, and for good reason. You were on the map, so to speak, but recruiting – back then was so different than it is now. It wasn't digital, it wasn't all this, you still had to figure out how to send your films and there was no um, recruiting services like they do now. So right. talk a little bit about Coach Latta's approach for you to be recruited and, and how was that experience for you? Um, coach, coach just got me the ball, you know, during the game, you know, anytime, you know, so he basically just wanted to get me on film and, and let the guys see me practice, you know, Anytime they're out there, coach would, you know, let me talk with them if, they, if that was available, you know, a choice that I could talk with them. Um, <clears throat> basically just, you know, just got me the ball and put me in position, you know, to be seen as an athlete and things like that. So. Did you, was football going to be the way you wanted to go or did you have aspirations to also play basketball? In no, it was, it was strictly football. And like I said, I wasn't the best basketball player. I was just a defensive player. You know, and I was small at that. So, I mean, well, I'm about 5'10", you know, 145 pounds. What did, uh, when did Coach Blakeney and Troy come on the, the scene for you? Um, they actually was one of the first ones. They was really on me heavy. I mean, him and Coach Boat, Coach Boat would walk, you know, walk in there and, you know, everybody would know Coach Boat. Because if, if you've seen Coach Boat, Coach Boat was, was, a, was a big guy. Mm -hmm. Now he's actually about half his size now. So you would know him. When wow. he came, when he came in the building down in the gym, and did did you mainly speak with him, or did you also have communications with Coach Blakeney before you made your decision? And and did you take a trip to Troy? I did. I did take a trip to Troy. Mm -hmm. did you I did take a trip to Troy. I did talk with Coach Blakeney um, later on in the recruiting process. I did take a trip. 
you know, went down there and saw the facilities and hung out with some of the older guys that were <clears throat> recruit, I mean, actually taking me on my recruiting visit. Were there any Dothan area uh, ball players on the roster at the time you were being recruited? On the roster? Um, a few guys, Dothan guys, or any of the other schools in the Wiregrass? I'm sure there were, with Troy being so close. I think there were, but I, I don't remember remember off the top. You know, I, I was right now. If you asked me that question later early on, I might would have been able to put names out. I come to you. And guys, we're we're having a great conversation with Johnny Falk, and we're we're during the recruiting process. What other schools showed interest in you, Johnny? I think it was a couple of um, HBCUs in uh, North Carolina. I know Sanford up in Birmingham. They wanted me to play a lot of offense. Mm -hmm. So um, I know. FSU came down. That was that was my first choice, to be honest. But you know, they didn't offer me. They did come down and you know and see me at practice. And I think it was Mickey Andrews. Um, he did come down, you know, watch practice and things like that. But that was my first choice because they looked exactly like Northview, and you know that's pretty much where I wanted to go. It's not just a coincidence that the school colors <laughs> were the same. Uh, and Northview over the years sent several kids to play at at Florida State, including my teammate, Lawrence Dossie. Uh, Sean McCorkle played both sports, uh, both sports, baseball and football there. And Marquez, of course, uh, played there. But let's talk about you're at Troy and in high school, you were a, a jack of all trades because we needed you wherever Coach Latta needed you. But how is it that cornerback ended up being your position and a position that obviously well, for those of you who don't know, you became that that's where you were known for in make, making all conference two years. Yeah, well, I, I started playing my 10th grade year uh, late on in 10th grade year of high school. I started playing and then you know, I just caught on from there. You know, I had Coach Griffin, Coach Fleming, mm -hmm. um, you know, just just teaching me the ropes, you know, working on my drills. And then I kind of just, you know, fell in love with it. And well, Johnny, I meant to ask you, and I apologize for skipping around a little bit, but I wanted to find out from you, do you have any favorite memories of any favorite games? Not just your first touchdown against you fall of the seam route, but were there any particular moments that, you know, when you look back on your high school career that maybe give you a big smile or gosh, man, that was a good game or that was a great play. I was glad to, to be able to do that. Anytime we beat those rival schools, it was always a good game. Every time we beat them and, and won, like we won region in 99. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we beat, yeah, we beat Enterprise and Dothan at the same, in the same year. That, that was always a good, fun year. And that didn't happen very often, beating Dothan and Enterprise in the same year. So I know that was a special, a special yes. year for you guys. Yes. Let me, let's get back to, to the Troy time period and what was that moment what was that game that maybe some of your first action playing for Troy when you realized I'm not in Northview anymore this is not high school there's 56,000 people in the stands and this is big boy football not that Northview in 6a football wasn't but playing on the college level is a whole different a whole different animal do you remember having one of those moments it was that that was the first my first year I think it was 2002 season um mm -hmm. I was at cornerback and we was at the corn huskers up in Nebraska and That's they ran the triple option they had some of the biggest linemen with the biggest heads I have ever seen in my life <laughs> <laughs> and you're out there on the corner right uh, no no I wasn't on, I wasn't I was at corner but they uh -huh. had me sitting in the sea gap Oh, I got you. I have been the smallest person on the field, but I was sitting in the sea gap, probably about 50% of the game. Wow. I, ooh, you got to take us there because Nebraska, with its very rich football program, a sea of red in that stadium. Now, I know that Troy has black and, and red in its uniforms, but that's a lot of red. And yeah. You got to take us to that game. Do you have any vivid memories, or is it just all a blur, a blur of how big those those linemen were? They were big, man. Like I said, they were some of the biggest linemen with the with the biggest heads. I'm telling you, when you when you got up, you, know, you made a tackle, you got up. You're like, whoa! 
I've never seen a guy this big. I'm talking about wide, man. Well, that was certainly a, a real uh, trial uh, by fire, if you will, getting thrown into a game like that. Yeah, a lot of fans. I mean, you know, they they well, they had one of the records for the sold most, you know, sold out arenas or you know stadiums, and that was right before I think Crouch had left. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Right, you know, right. We was just going to Division One and you know making the transition and all of that, so we were kind of you know still on the low, you know, as far as football wise, and we were just trying to make a name for ourselves then. Well, Johnny, all all athletes have a journey. All people have a journey through their, their lives and, and we have ups and we have downs, hopefully more ups than we have downs. But when you're an athlete, you don't win every game. You don't start every game. You, you know, you're fighting for your time. You're fighting for your position and you're a teammate at the same time. And you may have been a really, really big fish in a small pond in high school, but when you get to college, everybody's a really big fish in a small pond and now it's the competition is even more fierce. What did you learn as a collegiate athlete that maybe is a life lessons that you're now teaching your sons or that you're teaching your students and ball players that you learned from back in your day coming through the ranks? Uh, basically just, you know, never quit, um, keep working, be prepared because you never know when your time is coming. That's how I got my time. That's how I actually started. The guy got hurt 2000, I think it was maybe 2001 or 2002 spring. And, you know, I was the next guy going in. Luckily, you know, I was prepared. I was ready to go with physical shape. You know, my coaches, you know, got me ready to go. And, you know, I just kind of fell into that role, you know, as the starter. And I said, just, just never quit. You just don't never know when your time. That's why you got to be prepared, be ready to go. And just, you know, stay locked in and be ready, you know, mind, stay focused and um, just be just be ready for your time. You never know when your time is coming. Gosh, Johnny, I, I know you've always been ready because you're a thinker, you're a planner. Sure. And, and, and it's so it's so true. You know, we always hear in sports, it's the next guy or next woman up, whoever's ready. If it's your time to shine, then you better be ready for it. And if you're not, then you're going to get skipped over and you may or may not get that next opportunity. But it certainly sounds like through high school and through uh, your experiences playing at Troy, you were ready and you ready. And, you were, and you performed. And I appreciate you sharing your, your story. We're going to get out of here in just a minute. But I, I really do appreciate you sharing your story with us. we got some more folks. The deuce is loose, says Daniel Flowers. Big time. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my cousins right there. He said, he said, what up, Ken Folk? <laughs> uh, Chris Smith said he never forgets listening to that Nebraska game. I said, I guess on the radio, and uh, hearing it, his friend you called out on the, you know, being on the stage like that. That made him proud for you as well. So that's awesome. Let's see who we got some other folks who have rolled in here. Oh, it's, just, it's the same. Gosh, we, we're having a great conversation with Johnny Falk. And, and Johnny, you're coaching and teaching in the middle school uh, right now. I guess that's maybe sixth through eighth grades. Yes, sixth grade. And, and you're seeing such a big change and development, maturity, physical uh, of these kids from sixth to eighth grade. You're getting ready, getting them ready for high school. And you can't really... I'm assuming you can't really coach them up the same way you do when they're in high school, just because they're so young. What is it that you tell your, your sixth to eighth graders or whatever grades that you've got right now about getting prepared, about getting ready for the next level? Because I know those kids, your players, your student athletes, they go to those Friday night games to watch the high schools. They go or watch those Saturday games in college. And then obviously Sunday pros on TV. What are you telling those sixth to eighth graders right now about their preparation, about them getting themselves ready for the next level? Well, we just try to, you know, I'm just a big fundamental guy, mm-hmm. you know, working on those fundamentals. Cause if you, if you work those fundamentals, they're going to take you a long way farther than your talent will take you. 
So, you know, in practice, I just try to work the fundamentals, work the fundamentals, put them in position, show them, make sure they know how to line up. That's a big part of playing football. It's not really your turn. I've seen some of the fastest guys get beat or couldn't catch a, a, a football or or didn't know how to run the route. So my, my thing is I'm just a fundamental guy, you know, teach them what to do, show them what it's supposed to be. And then now it's time for you to react, go you know, turn it on, you know, play as hard as you can play, compete. That's the biggest thing, compete. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to get beat. That was one of the things my freshman year of, of Troy, I got beat several times, but I never quit. It actually taught me a lesson. Play, you know, because we had a lot of upperclassmen, wide receivers. Um, I would, you know, and what another one, another thing I would do, I would jump out there. They would see me back to back. You know, some of the other guys, they didn't want to go. I would jump out there again, you know. So it was actually teaching me and getting me ready, you know, and just, you know, prepare me for my next level. So, you know, I, I used to tell guys all the time, jump out there and get your reps. The more reps you get, the better you're going to get. Not sitting on the sideline. You don't get better sitting there. You know, so I would get as many reps as I could. And some of the older guys, they started seeing, you know, my talent. They would, you know, after practicing stuff, they would tell me, you know, you, you know, just keep going. You, you know, you're going to be okay. You're going to be good. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just I just kept jumping out of there. You got to, you know, just I, like I said, I just tell them, more reps you get, the better you're going to get. It's the man in the arena. It's the guy who competes. That's it's it. It's the man who puts himself on the line. Johnny, do any of those kids who are your student athletes now, do they ever uh, test you or want to race you in a, in a 40 yard race? Well, they did when I was in, when I, when I did high school for 10 years before I actually went to middle school these past, you know, I would get out there and actually do a little something and, you know, compete with them a little bit, you know, show them that I still had it still, I still, I'm still faster than y'all, you know? <laughs> Just keep stretching those hamstrings, my friend. <laughs> That's it. I, Father time is going to catch up with all of us at one point. It's caught me a little bit. It's caught it me. Catches us all, I promise you. Well, Johnny, thank you for spending time with me tonight, but I've so enjoyed our conversation. Thank you for having me, man. It's great to be on your show. Thank you my, for having me. My pleasure. Guys, one of the Cougars' finest players, Johnny Falk, with us tonight. And as we've been doing every Wednesday night, conversations with Cougars, you guys have a good, safe rest of your week, and we'll catch you next week. Take care.